Good morning and welcome everyone. Happy Friday and happy Masterclass Friday. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you once again on my favorite day of the week because it's Friday and because it's Masterclass Friday. It's the day that the Adobe Evangelists get together and we get to spend an hour with you each. Um, taking more of a deep dive into the topics that we're um, we're uh, we're passionate about and we, we want to go a little bit deeper with. So with that said, I want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time out of their day to either watch live or catch the replay. Uh, if you're watching the replay, that's awesome. If not, um, then you're not hearing this. No, just kidding. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, that's great. If you're watching it live, that's great. All right, so uh, just a quick couple housekeeping things. I know people watch on different platforms. You may be watching this on YouTube. You may be watching this on my Twitter. You may be watching this on my Facebook page. Wherever you're watching this, that's awesome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, but I also want to point out that um, if you want to participate in the chat, um, if you want to participate, and someone says the audio is a bit low, let me see if I can raise that for you. And maybe I'm just not close enough to the mic, but let me pump it up a little bit. All right, so that should be nice, loud, and clear. Uh, if you want to participate in the chat, be sure to head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, so if you, and it, you should see the banner up there. So b.net slash Adobe Live, where I just saw the comment about the audio, that's the chat I'm going to be looking at. So if you got your questions, if you got your um, how to's, if you got your just want to say hi to people in the chat, um, that's where you would go to do it. Now, because I, I, can't, I can't see all the chats and still teach the class at the same time. All right. Uh, so let's go. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Let's go into today's topic. Let's talk about um, presets. We're going to talk about presets both in Lightroom Classic. We're going to talk about presets in Lightroom. We're going to talk about presets on your mobile devices. We're going to talk about... Uh, <laughs> nice one, Steve. Uh, we're going to talk about just all about presets. We're going to talk about how they differ from profiles. We're going to talk about um, how you create them, how you sync them, how you get presets from others, how you can create presets from uh, inspiration, like from other photographers' images that you've seen, which is a, a new discovery feature over in Lightroom. Um, and I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks as well. <laughs> so I think that's going to be about it. Hopefully that should, hopefully we'll get through the, the topic today and, and have enough content or not too much where I won't get time to do it. Because, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know how long it's going to take. But I think we should be good for the hour or at least the next uh, 51 minutes. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive over to my computer so you can see what I'm doing here. I've got uh, Lightroom Classic up and running. Let's get rid of the banner. And I've got um, just a quick collection I put together this morning just to have some images to work with. But it doesn't matter which images. I, I just did a mixture of people and landscapes and even uh, Lisa, our, our, our dog just to have something to show you the differences in what the presets do and so forth and so on. Now, uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna start off in classic, but I will get over to Lightroom in just a few minutes. I'm gonna show you, first of all, the big difference between profiles and presets, because that's where we really need to start. So you have an understanding of which one's which and which one do you use for what purpose. So let's let's uh, just pull up. I'll just pull up this first portrait here, and let's go over to the develop module, or if you were in Lightroom, it would be the edits. And um, you notice that there is a pop-up menu over here on the right-hand side called Profile, and you can either pull down to a profile, or you can use the browser over here on the right-hand side. It's a little button that brings up the browser, so you can see profiles. Uh, but you can get to your profiles either way. And what profiles do versus presets, and the presets in Classic, by the way, over here on the left-hand side, you can even see they're affecting the image as I hover over it. You're seeing the different uh, changes that are happening. So what's the difference between a profile and a preset? Well, let me, um, 
let me first of all reset this image make sure it's completely reset nothing's been done to it and just let me click on a preset first just so you see the difference let me go to one that's really going to make a visual difference all right we'll we'll uh pick something bronze tone all right when i click bronze tone uh if i go down to that's probably a bad one to pick hang on because that's an old one hold on hold on hold on uh let me pick one that's not so old there we go if i uh if i pick this um chevelle toned uh number three that i created years ago you notice that it did some things to the photo first of all it adjusted the saturation slider if i were to go into probably color grading it may have made some changes there because I believe this used to be uh, done with the hue saturation, or not with the hue saturation, with the um, with the split toning uh, that we used to have. But in other words, as, if I were to go through all these sliders, chances are it's made some changes to the photo. And it may have even changed and, and put it back on the old profile um, for ACR 4.6. So anyway, it, it's made some changes to the photos sliders and that's what presets are they're basically when you make an adjustment to a photo you move sliders you color it you reduce the saturation you add more saturation whatever it is you do you sharpen it whatever it is you do you're saying these set of things i've done maybe it's one maybe it's 10 maybe it's 20 whatever the number of things is that i did i want to save that group of things so that I can apply that same group of things to the next photo. That's a preset. So let me, let me reset this, get it back to the way it was. So now no sliders, back to the Adobe Color. And now let's talk about what's a profile. A profile, I like to, to explain it as it's the foundation of your photo. So for example, if you were shooting in JPEG, and you, you, or you shot with your phone, you shot with your camera in JPEG and you snapped and you look at it on the back of the screen. The camera, by the time you can see it on the back of the screen, has already applied things to that image. It's applied sharpening, it's applied color toning, it's applied all kinds of things to the image to make it look good based on what the camera thinks it should look like. So that's the advantage of JPEG and also the disadvantage for people that want don't want their camera processing their images. So um, if you shoot RAW, the idea of RAW is that the camera is hands off. I'm not going to touch your image. I'm going to leave your image the way it came from the sensor. I'm not going to touch it. That's a RAW image. So... Raw images can be kind of shocking at first when you bring them into, into the computer because you're looking at this beautiful scene, this beautiful subject, whatever. And then when you get in the computer, it looks dull. It looks flat. It looks like lifeless. It looks like the color's gone out of it. It doesn't look like it's been processed at all. And that's the point of raw. So what a profile attempts to do is to get it to look like it would have looked if it were shot as a JPEG or it looked like it would have looked as, as a slightly processed image without processing it. That's the big difference. So if I were to pick portrait, for example, because this is a person and I were to pick, and by the way, the only reason I'm getting Adobe Landscape, Adobe Portrait, Adobe Standard, and Adobe Vivid is because this is a raw file. If you're not seeing those in your pop-up, it's because you've got a JPEG or a TIFF or some non-RAW file selected right now. Those only show up for RAW files. If it's um, a JPEG, there's no RAW profile because it's already been processed. There's no reason for those. So if I were to switch it to portrait, barely noticeable. Like I, 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 with the blink of an eye, I couldn't even tell the difference. Because it only did a slight amount of difference to make, because it already looks pretty good, it did a slight amount of difference out of the camera to make it look more like a portrait, more like a person. If I were to switch it to something else, maybe um, Vivid, okay, I can see it. the color got a little richer. The color got a little bit more vivid. But no matter what profile I pick, even if I go and pick something artistic, let's go, let's go crazy. Let's go to one of the artistic profiles and let's really jazz it up. Let's really pick something visually different like this, this 
uh, Artistic One. All right, so I picked Artistic One. It's definitely more magenta, more red. We can see it right off the bat. There's no doubt it's been changed, but guess what? None of your sliders moved. Not a single slide. If I go to color, if I go to anywhere, not a single slider changed. So profiles set a foundation for an image without changing your edit. So whether you apply the profile up front or whether you apply the profile um, after, like you could be done with the entire edit and say, oh, I wish it were a little bit more magenta and click this profile and all your edits, if you change the exposure, if you change whatever, would look the same, it would just be a little bit more magenta now. So it's, it's applying a look to a photo without, <laughs> I was gonna say something bad, without messing up your edits. <laughs> I was gonna use a different word, but uh, I'm back, I forgot, I'm back on Adobe Live. <laughs> so without messing up your edits, it, was, it would apply that look. So for example, let's reset it. Let's get it back to the way it was, no profile, back to the standard Adobe Color. And let's say I did adjust the exposure. I, I brightened it up, it's, it's overexposed, but I, I brightened it up and I applied um, some vibrance to it. Okay, so now I go back to that same uh, artistic and it just applies artistic to it without changing anything else. My exposure is still where I put it. My vibrance is still where I put it. And I, by the way, I also, for any profile, or especially the artistic ones, I have an amount slider. So if I wanted more of that profile, I want her hair to be more magenta, I can make it more. Or if I think that profile is too much, I can pull back from that profile. But no matter what I do on a profile, it's, um, and Raul's asking a question, I'll answer it in a second. It, it's not changing the edit. It's just the profile. So some people like to think of the profile as a filter. I don't really want to call it the filter because filters can mean different things to different people. It's a foundation. It's a, it's a look to the photo without changing what you did. So Raul's asking, so the, um, the profile is uneditable. Um, correct. You, you don't, because it's not an edit. It's a profile. It's a standard look that someone created. And there's YouTube tutorials on how to create your own profiles. It can be done. Um, but it, it, you can change the amount, but you can't change like, oh, instead of magenta, I want it to be cyan. You can't do that. So it is what it is. The profiles are what they were created to be, and you don't make any changes to them. If you want the image to look more cyan, that's an edit. But profiles are profiles. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's reset it. Let's get it back to the way it was. And now that we know what profiles are, and now that we know what a preset is, let's make a preset and let, let's apply it to multiple photos. All right, so I'm gonna go to these two and I'm going to go into this photo and I'm gonna start making some changes to it. So I'm going to um, bump up the shadows there we go, bring out that mountain there. I'm gonna apply a little dehaze. There we go. The image is also crooked, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna also uh, just bump up the vibrance and even crank up a little saturation. And because it's a landscape, I'll even add some texture to it. All right, so I've moved, I don't know, four or five different slides. Oh, and I'm gonna apply a profile called um, landscape. So again, landscape is landscape, has nothing to do with my edit. Didn't move a single slider, and I applied it after the fact. So you can apply profiles at any point in your, in your photo. All right, so now that I've got the, um, yep, Sean's right. Uh, so Raul, you can't change what the profile is, but you can change the amount, and I showed that with the amount slider. And if it's, if it's a raw profile, there is no amount. It is what it is. Okay, so now that I've made those changes, I go over to my presets, my preset area over here, and there's a plus sign in Lightroom Classic, and I click the plus sign, and I click Create Preset. Now, when I click Create Preset, it's gonna bring up a dialog box where you really have to, I was gonna say know what you're doing. You really, not so much know what you're doing, know what you want, that's more like it. So Create Preset, and brings up this preset called, 
uh, untitled. You make it, call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it um, um, Landscape um, Brighton Shadows. All right, I'll just call it that. Okay, so now this is the part where I'm saying you need to know what you want. Because, and this will get to a very important question that people always ask about presets in just a minute. But what I mean by this is everything you check, whether you did something to that area or not. So for example, I didn't do anything to sharpening, but if I leave sharpening checked down here in the, in the bottom right or bottom left, I mean, then it will apply whatever the sharpening is on this photo right now to the next photo. So if you're okay with that, leave sharpening checked. If you're not okay with that and you're saying, well, I didn't even touch sharpening, don't touch sharpening, don't don't touch sharpening on the next photo. I didn't touch clarity, did I? No. So don't touch clarity on the next photo. I didn't touch the tone curve. So don't touch it on the next photo. I didn't touch white balance. And the reason I'm unchecking these things will become very apparent in a few minutes. All right, so... Um, I did apply some color. I didn't really apply any color grading. I didn't do any noise reduction. I didn't do any post crop vignettes or any of that. I didn't, um, I didn't apply a calibration change and I didn't apply any lens corrections. So don't do any of those things. So I'm basically telling it what not to do, leaving only the things checked that I want the preset to do. And this is a big, this, part of choo picking and choosing is a big deal and you'll see again i keep promising you'll see in just a minute why but let me go ahead and create it okay so now if i go and if i go to my user presets user presets and somewhere down here there should be one called landscape uh, bright and shadows there it is and i go to the next photo and i click landscape bright and photos it's going to do those things now, you're thinking, well, the photo didn't, doesn't look the same. It doesn't look like the sky is really overexposed. It doesn't look the same because it's a different photo with a different exposure. It's not going to look exactly the same. If I go to this next photo and I do this one, um, it might look a little better. Let's do landscape bright and shadows. Yeah, that one looks a little better. Because this one, the sky was already overexposed. It is, it, so my preset's not going to make the overexposure go away because I didn't address overexposure in the la in, when I set up the preset. The other photo didn't need it. So when you're thinking about presets, you're really thinking about what thing do you want to be able to apply globally to the next photo, so forth and so on, that is something you want to happen. So for example, if I go back to this photo and look, I look at the foreground um, and I hit reset, the foreground had a lot of shadow detail in it that did get brighter because that's exactly what this preset's designed to do is brighten shadows. It's not designed to, to compensate for overexposure. So it did brighten the shadows like it's supposed to. Now, I might argue on this photo, it brightened them too much. And again, it's a preset. It's got a number. It's got a value. It's not analyzing the photo. It's saying, make the, pre make the shadows plus 70. <laughs> That's all it's doing. So if the shadows plus 70 on this photo is too much, then you're going to have to back off on this photo. But on this photo, plus 70 was fine. If I go back to zero, that's zero where you can't even see the door. But if I undo that, and take it back to plus 70, oh, that's actually the right amount for this photo. That looks pretty good. I can see inside the doorway now. So presets are, you have to really think of them in a way that what do you want to happen to the next photo? Can I copy a preset from another picture and apply it to mine? Oh, yes, you can, Andrew, and we're going to get to that. Uh, that's a very big part of today. All right, so... Um, I think presets will be very useful with my studio shots. Absolutely. Because again, you can have hundreds of presets if you, especially if you're good with your naming and organization of what you want the preset to do. But you also have to remember what is the preset doing? So like I said, in my overexposure case, the preset doesn't help me there because that's not what that preset does. Now I can still go in after I've applied this preset, 
I can auto tone it. I can bring back down the exposure, or I could have done it manually. I can bring down the exposure manually on this photo, and oh, okay, now that's not so bad. It, it still needs probably a little bit more dehaze than the preset applied. And um, if I go back to my shadows, let's bring the shadows back up. And now it's starting to get better. But again, the preset did what it was supposed to do. It didn't do everything because the preset didn't contain everything. Now, I made a big point about unchecking the things you don't want it to do for a reason. I like, uh, let's go back to our portraits. I love the sharpening in Lightroom. I love what um, what the masking does for for human faces, especially soft face, soft skin, like females, babies, so forth and so on. So um, what I want sharpening to do is sharpen the eyebrows, sharpen the eyes, sharpen the lips, sharpen any jewelry they're wearing, sharpen the hair, but don't sharpen the skin. Don't, you know, like if they have pimples or whatever, don't make the pimples exaggerated with sharpening. That would be a bad thing. Don't overdo skin, but yes, sharpen the other things. And that's exactly what you can do with the sharpening here in Lightroom. So for example, if I were to go down to, and let's reset this image, make sure it's got nothing done to it. And I were to go to detail and I would go to sharpening. Now sharpening happens automatically on a raw file. So if we were to go in and look at the sharpening that's been done to this photo, that number 40, I didn't choose that. I And you just saw me hit reset. It defaulted to 40 because it's a raw file. And just a little trivia, the old default used to be 25. Um, Dirk's asking, can you um, use a preset in a batch action? Well, there's no batch actions in Lightroom. You just select multiple photos and click preset. So in a batch scenario, yes, <laughs> but there's no actions. Uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> the amount 40 used to be 25 and they upped it to 40 for raw files because of higher megapixel cameras. As cameras became more and more megapixels, the amount of sharpening by default got increased from 25 to 40. So just a little bit of trivia, but that's not what's important to me. What's important to me is this masking number, which is defaulting to zero. And let me show you what this magical thing does. On a person, I want what I want sharpened. I want this, the hair, eyes, eyebrows, lips, jewelry, anything else like that, not skin. And Lightroom knows what a face is. Therefore, it knows what it should sharpen and what it shouldn't if you use masking. So I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key on Windows so you can see it. You, you can drag the slider, you just won't see what it's doing. But if you hold down your Option or Alt key, then you can see it. And as I drag the slider, what I'm trying to accomplish is right now at zero, everything's getting sharpened. As I drag the slider to the right, to where only, where the skin's not white, in other words, the skin's black, everything that's white is getting sharpened. So whatever this amount is, let's say I make it a nice number like 65. So when I let go, I now know that if I were to zoom in on this, her eyes getting sharpened, but her skin isn't. And I can even increase the amount. I'll go crazy on the amount. And no matter how much I increase that amount, it's only sharpening this stuff, not her skin, because of the masking has automatically masked it out. Um, general preset versus brush preset. They're just as they describe. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But um, brush presets are for the brushes and general presets are for everything else. All right. So anyway, I'm going to pull this back down to, um, let's say, 40. All right, 40. And um, and again, that's amount that's affecting only those areas. It's not affecting anything else. So anyway, if I jump out of this now, now let's say, oh my God, I've got my, my perfect preset for sharpening skin. Or, and I'm sorry, sharpening people, not skin. 
So I want to create a preset for that now so I don't ever have to drag the slider anymore. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about the amounts. I've adjusted it. Let's say I even like it to be a little sharper. So let's say I bump up the sharpening from 40 to, let's say, around 50. All right, so now I've got my default setting. This is what I want to always sharpen people for. So I'm going to go and create a preset called Sharpen People. And I have one already called Sharpen Faces, but just for the sake of today, Sharpen People. Save it in my user presets and turn off everything else. Because if I don't turn off everything else, it will apply all these other things too, even if I didn't change them. So even if I didn't change the color, whatever the color settings is for this photo, it will apply it to the next photo. I only want it to sharpen the, the faces, not anything else. So now when I create that preset, sharpen people, and then I go to, so someone asked about batch work. So now I want to, I have four more people to sharpen. So I select all four and I just click on, where I go, oh, go to develop first. I go to develop and I go find my sharpened people that I just made. There it is. And I click and all four of those images get sharpened. So they don't get anything else applied to them. They just get, uh, dun, 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 dun. please describe batch editing working for studio work as opposed to what? Okay. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's what you mean by batch. So I, I select a thousand photos, click the preset, select 10,000 photos, select the preset. So that's batch editing in terms of what Lightroom does. Now batch editing doesn't, isn't just limited to presets. If I wanted to select all four of those photos and reset them and, uh, make them black and white. Now all four, uh, all four of those photos will ultimately be black and white. There we go. All four of those photos will be black and white. So batch editing is just anything that's selected and you apply th changes to it will apply it to the whole batch. But there's one thing I have turned on that makes that possible. Let me undo this, undo that. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner of Lightroom Classic, and this is a classic feature. It's not available in Lightroom, um, in just Lightroom. You have a thing called, it's an on-off switch. Normally by default, yours is on sync. That's the way it ships. That's the way it is when you install it. I have clicked this button and never turned it off. It's called auto sync. So with auto sync turned on, that means that if you select two or more photos, two, 20, 200, 2000, whatever it is, you apply whatever changes to one, it applies them to all. You apply a preset to one, it applies them to all, whichever ones are selected. And I, I had someone reach out to me the last time I taught that technique and they said, no matter what I do, it's applying it to all the photos. I, I don't I don't have them all selected. I'm like, you must have them all selected if it's applying them to all the photos. And sure enough, they did. And they, they didn't realize because when it's all selected, it's kind of hard to tell that they're selected. The, the the frame around them got lighter gray. but And, and the most selected image has a, even a lighter gray around it. So how do you unselect photos in Lightroom? And by the way, just clicking on, uh, oh, hang on. Just clicking on the thumbnail just makes it the most selected, even though they're all still selected. So a couple techniques. Number one, if I just want to select one photo without the other ones being selected, don't click on the thumbnail, the picture, the person, click on the frame, the area around the picture. That will deselect all the other photos and just select that one. Number two, if they're all selected, and you don't know that or you can't tell which ones are selected or whatever the selection problem is, uh, if you go to your edit menu and you choose select none, command D, just like in Photoshop, that will deselect all the photos. So now nothing's selected. So you can um, deselect multiple ways. You can also select multiple ways um, to, to ba do batch editing. I can hold down my shift key, select four photos in a row. I can hold down my command key on Mac, my uh, control key on Windows and select uh, photos that aren't next to each other. And whatever I apply will apply it to all of them, no matter what. Uh, so back to presets. All right, so the reason, and let's go back to these and let's do the sharpen faces again or sharpen people again, because I think I reset them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sharpen people, there we go. Now. 
The reason why that unchecking everything else is, um, is important is because the number one question and the number one myth people have is that you can only apply one preset. In other words, if I apply sharpen and then I go apply one that makes it green, then my sharpen's gone. And that's not true. It just depends on the way the preset was set up. So for example, if I now go to this photo and I go into develop and I go into my color grading, let's go into color grading. There we go. And I, I use green. So let's use that example. Oh, I don't want to use green. I don't like green. <laughs> let's make it blue. All right. So I go into blue and I make the, I just make the mid tones blue and I now save that as a preset. And again, I only check color grading. Make it blue. Then I can, and let's reset it now. So let's reset the photo. So let's go to sharpening. And sharpening should be back to 40 and zero, right? No masking, 40, because that's the default. So now if I apply um, sharpen people. There it is, sharpen people. And I also apply make it blue. It didn't change my sharpening because both presets don't override each other as long as the as long as the things that are checked in both presets are not the same. So if color grading was checked in both, then yes, the second one would apply and overwrite the first one. But if sharpening is in one, textures in another, um, lens corrections in another, and make it bl or blue color gradings in another, I can apply four presets as long as they don't, they're not designed to overwrite each other, meaning you didn't save them with, with the same feature set so that um, they, make the same changes to each photo. So that's how it works. If uh, you can have, you can apply 50 presets if you can find 50 things that are different, <laughs> as long as you don't choose the same thing. And uh, you can absolutely stack presets. So I can go sharpen all the photo, all the people the way I want, and then go individually apply presets that do other things that change the way they look, change the color, change the exposure, change the um, uh, white balance, so forth and so on the way I want. It's totally up to you. Uh, so that's the way presets work in, in terms of being able to apply multiple presets to the same photo. All right, next up, let's go talk about, um, we got like, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes left. So let's make sure we get a couple things uh, in, all right, one tip and one t new tip. And then we're gonna uh, talk about exporting presets. We're gonna talk about importing presets, so forth and so on. All right, <clears throat> Lightroom Classic added one new feature in presets that is not in Lightroom, the other version. Um, and it has to do with ISO. So for example, I've got two photos here. I've got this picture of Lisa. And if I were to go look at the, um, the settings for it, this one we can see was shot with ISO 100. Okay, great. If I go look at, this photo of Lisa, it was shot with, a, with an iPhone, but it was it defaulted to ISO 6400. So big drastic difference in, I, oh, actually no, it was shot with a Nikon. Uh, shot, big drastic difference shot with two different ISOs. So what, um, what the Lightroom team did was they created a, and hang on, let me find, let me find the webpage so I can, sh I, can I never can remember the name of it. Adaptive ISO, that's it. So you can create an adaptive ISO preset. And what that will do is it's designed for when you are going to have varying ISOs and you want to create a preset that will average the amount of noise reduction that you apply to them. So for example, the photo that's only 100 ISO 
doesn't need a lot of noise reduction. If I go into the develop, it, it's, it's not really noisy at all because it was shot with 100 ISO. It looks pretty good. So I don't really need to do anything to that one as far as noise reduction is concerned. Now I might go do other things while I'm here. I might go do an auto update, you know, just again, brighten it, adjust my shadow clipping, adjust my highlight clipping, um, and whatever, <laughs> she's got her foot wrapped around that cord. Whatever else I wanna to do to it, that's great. But then when I go to the other one, this is the one that probably does have a little noise in it because it was shot at, I, oh, it actually still looks pretty good. These cameras these days. Uh, but it, was, it, it may need, let's say I do need to go in and apply some noise reduction. So let's go into detail and let's, um, let's look at the noise here. Okay, it, again, it's not bad. But let's say I go in and apply a little bit of noise reduction. So I'll, I'll apply 30. All right, so that just smoothed it out a little bit. It, it wasn't bad at all, but let's say I do that now. So now that I've adjusted both photos, this is the only preset that you create that you select two photos. Otherwise, um, let me change. So Bruce is asking when I was showing the selection techniques, can you change the color selection to like a different color? Believe me, if we could, I would have already. <laughs> no, you can't change it to blue or green or yellow or something that's more obvious. It is what it is, as far as I know. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and select these two photos. This is the only time when you create a preset where you select two photos because otherwise you will never get to this feature. So when I select two photos and I'm in the develop module and I go click create preset, I'm going to uncheck everything except this new feature down here at the bottom. And this is this is grayed out every time you only have one photo selected. So you can't even choose it. Create an adaptive ISO preset. All right. So now, and I can even call it uh, adaptive ISO. Uh, 100 to 6400. Okay. So now that I've got that preset set or created, what will that do? All that will simply do is if, now it, it, again, it's a big range, 100 to 6,400 ISO. So let's say I select a photo that's 3,200 ISO. Well, remember at 6,400 ISO, I set, the, um, I set the noise reduction to 30. Well, apparently then a 3,200 ISO from the same camera probably won't need as much noise reduction. So it would automatically adjust it to, to 15. So it's going to be it's going to be that average in between the two noise reductions for any photo you adjust from now on. So if I do one this and I'm not, uh, I'm not going to pretend I'm I'm great at math off the top of my head. So 3200 right in the middle, it's going to make it half. If I did one that's only a, a thousand ISO, it's going to make it less. If I did one that's uh, five thousand ISO, it's going to make it higher. But it's always going to keep it between zero and thirty based on that adaptive ISO preset I just created. That's what adaptive ISO is. Okay, and that's a Lightroom Classic feature. Next up. All right, next, um, we did that, we did that, we did that. All right, let's go, let's go to Lightroom. So we're gonna leave Lightroom Classic, head over to Lightroom. You're gonna see the same photos, and if they synced, you're gonna leave, you can even see the blue that I applied to that photo. The same things are coming over. And so the first question someone would normally ask is, well, where are the presets in Lightroom? Do you have presets? Are they the same? Yes, they are. And you get to them in edit. So there's no develop module. You just go to edit. And it used to be a button at the bottom that says presets. And I always look for it because it's been there for so long. But now it's a little button in the upper left corner of the edit window called presets. So it's a smaller button. Click it. It brings up the, the similar presets that you saw before. Now, um, user presets are the ones that you saved and you created your own. So there's my sharpened faces, which looks like it's doing more than just, hang on, if I click that, no, it didn't. It was just a leftover preview, but sharpened faces. And if I go to detail, if I go down to the um, detail, then it will be that 40, no, this is an old one. This is not sharpen people. So it's 40 and 25. It's not what I created like 50 and 30. I think the other one was. But it's, it's 40 and 25 because that's what that preset was set to and it's only doing sharpening. 
So the, the, the presets work the same way. Now, one thing I forgot to show while I was over in Classic, but it has the same presets. We have these new premium presets that we installed in the last update. So you see this one, and, and let me uh, undo my, um, there we go. All right. Okay, so you see this, uh, this, these, these portrait or portraits, dark, deep skin, portraits, medium skin, portraits, light skin, style, cinematic, futuristic, vintage, and travel. These are all premium presets that got installed with the last update. So if I head over to classic and I go back to develop and they're, they're, they're here as well. They're in the upper left-hand corner. So these are not ones you created. These are ones that came with the last update. And let's head back to Lightroom. So what are they for? They're just as the name implies. They're giving you a head start with your presets with, with kind of some of the things that the team thought would be kind of cool. So uh, her skin's more medium than, than dark. So let's go medium. And as I hover over them, I can see if I like any of these on this photo or not. It's giving me some black and white choices. And again, they're just that. They're just designed to give you some choices to get you started with your edit. So this one applied a little bit of contrast. This one applied, um, I, I doubt if it changed that. It applied a little bit in the highlights towards the green. Uh, I did some blending there. So it applied different things based on what that preset does. And they're, they're affectionately numbered PM06, PM07, so forth and so on. So premium 06, premium 07, or portrait medium skin is probably what that means, uh, so forth and so on. If I were to go to the style cinematic, then I'm just going to get some, again, different looks. And look at, by the way, look at the color grading as I hover over each one. That's what it's doing to each photo if I were to click on it. So it's nice that you get these previews. You don't have to spend a lot of time clicking and then undoing. Just don't click on it if you don't like it. And then if I go to futuristic, same thing. That's a black and white one. That one, that's interesting. I want to click on this one. I just want to see what it did. This one looks like it applied, it applied a profile. It applied some contrast. It definitely upped the blacks. I want to see what it did in detail, if anything. Yeah, it applied some sharpening, some noise reduction, color noise reduction. So again, these are just presets that the Lightroom team uh, came up with for you to play with and have and and use and learn from and so forth and so on. Oh, I want to see travel now. All right, cool. All right, so one of the questions that people will often ask, and I want to make sure I cover this before we run out of time, whether I'm in Classic or whether I'm in Lightroom, how do I get my presets from one to the other? And how do I get my presets on my phone or my iPad or my mobile device? So let's cover, first of all, getting them from Classic. And then we'll, once we get it into Classic, the rest will be easy. So let's say that I created that preset. Let's say I'm moving from Classic over to mobile or I'm moving from Classic uh, to uh, Lightroom. And I like that preset that I created called um, what was it? Make, or make, it, make it blue. So I like my make it blue preset and I want to use that going forward. So how can I get that preset over to Lightroom? Uh, number one, on my phone. Number one, you could just sync the photo and create a new preset and that would do it. <laughs> but if you had more than one, then you probably don't want to do it one by one, creating them all over again. So if I right click on this preset, and this is only a classic feature, it will say show in Finder because these presets are little text files on your hard drive. So if I say show in Finder, it brings up a settings window with that preset and there it is. It's a little XMP file, one or three kilobytes, make it blue, that's all it is because it's just instructions. So now I wanna take that preset over to Lightroom. So if I go to Lightroom, and I go to the um, pop-up menu, and I go to import presets, and of course it doesn't know where that is, so I'm gonna head back to the operating system for a second, drag that into that window so it knows where it is. There it is, make it blue, import, 
And now I've got a, if I go down to my user preset somewhere in here, I've got to make it blue. There it is. Now, you, now the next question is, well, that's awesome. How do I get it onto my phone? You don't. You don't do anything else. I mean, you don't have to do anything else. Because we sync not only the photos and the edits, we also sync pro, or, um, presets. You know, I'm profiles too, for that matter. So if you create a preset or import a preset into Lightroom on desktop, it's automatically being synced to your phone and your tablets. So for example, let me just make sure I've got this ready. For example, let's go to this photo. I'm going to show you this in just a second. Hang on one second. I want to make sure I got this right. Oh my God, it's not coming up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two seconds. There we go. Okay. If I were to now go over to and show you my iPad. There we go. There's the iPad. And so I, I was basically in the edit. And let's pick a different photo. So let's pick this photo. And then I go to my um, presets. I go to library. I go to user presets. And if it's not here yet. It will be eventually. Uh, once this syncs, and probably it will help if I get out of it on desktop. Hold on. There we go. Uh, by the way, just a side note, syncing pauses while you're editing the photo. So until you go back to the grid, which I just did, now, now that I've gone back to the grid, I saw the little sync icon rotating, letting me know it was doing something. So until I go back to the grid, it, it's not there. And now I can see it over here. There's the make it blue on the iPad. So if I tap make it blue, it does the whatever make it blue is supposed to do. So all you have to do is either create the preset on your desktop in Lightroom or import it. Even if you don't use Lightroom for anything else, let's say you're a classic user, but you want those presets on your mobile device, get them into Lightroom desktop and it automatically sync over. And the same thing, if you're on your mobile device and you create a new preset and you say, oh, I really like this preset, just create it and it will automatically be synced up to the desktop. Now, the only thing I have not found a way to do, and I didn't really think about it till today, <laughs> or earlier today. The only thing I have not found a way to do is to go from Lightroom back to Classic with presets. Now, I know the photo will sync and you can create the preset manually from the photo, but I have not found a way like to export them out of Lightroom back to Classic. I, I'll have to think and see if that's a way to do it. All right, uh, uh, Caribou's learning big time, great. How did you get the preset window next to the develop settings? Uh, on which platform? So on, on iPad, it's, here, I'll go back to edit. Oh, let me say done. So you're normally in the edit window on iPad or phone for that matter. And then right below that icon, the two little circles, the black and white circle, that's your presets. So if I tap presets, those are my presets. And I was in user presets versus um, premium. Those are the same premium presets we saw on desktop. And if I go to library, those are the ones including my user presets. And there's my um, make it blue and my um, sharpen faces. And again, I tap sharpen faces. It did not make the photo not blue because I'm stacking those two presets on. Okay, um, while we're on iPad, let's go ahead and cover one more thing. Let's get out of this. Let's say we're done. Let's go to the next photo. Let's say uh, Allie. All right, so we're on this photo and now I wanna get out of this photo for a second. And I wanna go, uh, you have this both in Lightroom on desktop and Lightroom on mobile. 
you see when you're looking at your albums in the upper left corner, you got those icons. So one looks like books, like that's your library. The other one is for um, sharing, for sharing with people. The third, the, the fourth one, third one and fourth one are learn and discovery content. So if I go to the light bulb, this will show me my for you section. And this is my curated section of, of edits that Lightroom thinks I would want to look at and learn from. But also if I just go to the fourth icon, which is uh, the Lightroom community, this is where anyone can submit an edit of their favorite photo for others to look at and use or whatever. And when I say use, I don't mean the photo, I mean the technique. So for example, if I, um, and of course I'm just seeing results here, so I'm, I would have to, okay, let's go to popular categories, let's go people. All right, so now I'm, I'm on people. And, all right, so this, uh, all right, so this one's got this purple tone to it. Now, I don't know if that's when they add it to it or not, but what it's doing right now is it's running through whatever edits they did. And I can really see that, okay, so there it is. It, it got darker, it got a little bluer, so forth and so on. If you tap edits, it will actually show you, you can actually scroll through what edits they did. So color grading, that's what they did. Uh, go back down to temperature, original, that's the original. Highlights, whites, blacks, temperature, vibrance, sharpening, so forth and so on, all the way down to color noise reduction. You see the button at the bottom? Save as preset. So if I like the overall end result of this, I'm not saving the edits, I'm saving the end result as a preset. So it's called My Baby by Julio. Let's go, let's go grab one more and then I'll show you where they are. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna get out of people because I know if I go to landscapes, I'm gonna get some more dramatic color. There we go. All right, let's get out of that and let's say, I really like, um, I like what has been done on this sunset. So let's see what it looked like. Okay, that's what it looked like originally. And if I let it go, that's what it's, that's the changes they're making to it. And that's what it ends up as. Oh, wow, cool. I really like that. Yay. Let's get to the end result. Save as preset. And that one's called um, bat, batteries. All right. Anyway, uh, different language. All right. So now I go back, I get out of this. I go back to my library. I go back to my library. Oh, no, I can't get back to my library. I don't know why I can't get back. All right, tell you what, let's go back to the desktop. I don't know why I couldn't get out of that, but anyway, let's go back here. So just to show you, you've got those same things here. You've got learn and discovery here as well. But because I created those presets, let's go back to my images. Let's go back to Alley and let's go to edit and let's go to presets. Where those they, those won't be saved under user presets because user presets are yours. Where they will be saved is under saved presets. So the saved presets are the ones that I just saved. So there's my baby and there's the graceful swan, or actually that other one hasn't come in yet. So that's the first one I did, my baby, and that would give it that look. This is another one that I saw um, uh, Katrin Eisman do. This was more from a landscape, so that's why it's making the portrait look a little funny. But you can get people's, you can get presets from people's in results just by using that discovery panel. And hang on one second, let me see if I can get back. All right, there we go. That's working again. So let me go back to the iPad. All right, so, um, and again, if I get out of it on my desktop, it will sync. There we go. And if I now go into this one, let's say if that let's see if that one actually did get saved. Let's go to presets. Let's go to save presets. And yeah, there it is. The top one. The top one was the last one I saved from that landscape. 
So you can get, uh, and this one's got a few more that had not sunk over yet. So these are all from other people's photos. And again, some were designed for landscapes. Not all of these were designed for people. But you can doesn't mean you can't use them on people. You can use them on anything you want. So if I go look at my um, people, my landscape images, done. Go to my landscape images. Let's say that one. And let's go to presets on this one. And uh, saved. Then I can see what those pre. Oh, I kind of like that one. See, this is why I saved this one from the trend because it's kind of a cool, dramatic uh, look, and it shows me some spots I need to remove in my sky. But anyway, uh, it's kind of cool just being able to use these presets from other people's images. Now you can, um, in my last minute here, you can also, of course, um, export presets from Lightroom Classic. You can go buy presets and import them into either version. Once they're imported into Lightroom Desktop, they're available on your mobile devices. And basically, you can just have a blast with presets. Presets are amazing. They're fun. So for example, if I go back one last second real quick, if I go back to this, um, my user presets, all of these ones listed at the bottom called WOW, that was from a WOW set of presets that I downloaded. So I just imported them into Lightroom on Desktop and then synced them over to Lightroom on mobile. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.